idea just takes imagination. A million dollar invention takes a whole lot more. You need guidance. You need money. You need us. I'm George Zidan. I'm an MIT trained chemist with a passion for inventions. And I'm Deanne Bell. I'm a mechanical engineer and I can get almost anything built. Getting a concept from paper to prototype to market eats up so much time and money. Countless ideas never come to life. It took money from my grandparents, my parents. But I'm not an engineer. There's no way we can do this. That's why we're on a nationwide mission to rescue them. Got some speed! Off you go! Each week, we'll meet two inventors. I found your patent. I think it's a great idea. Oh, God. We'll help them perfect their prototype. <laughs> we'll troubleshoot. It's not capturing as we'd hoped. We'll focus test. The concept is good, the execution is not. And we'll match them with the perfect potential investor. I've got two investors for you. Sick. <laughs> then it's up to the inventor to pitch their idea and see if it deserves an investment that could change their lives forever. I think I'd like to go ahead and make you an offer of 1.4 million. Half a million dollars, 1.5 million. <laughs> nice. An IT manager thinks he has an invention that might just rejuvenate the sport of ice skating. The kids love globally. But is he the right man for the job? One of the big problems is going to be you. And this engineer from Texas believes there's a huge market for personalized cakes decorated right before your eyes. This thing is actually going to build bigger than my vision. But has he overestimated the consumer's appetite? Target price for the consumer is uh, $900. $900? That's insane. That's all next. On Make Me a Millionaire Inventor. I'm in Petaluma, California to meet an IT manager named Ralph Haney. He's the inventor of Glowblade. It's a light of attachment that you can put on ice skates that illuminates the ice around you while you skate. With the global popularity of skating, just thinking about the potential of glow blades has me glowing. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Ralph. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Ralph's family has been very supportive of his dream. So what's your name? Allie. Allie. Nice to meet you. And now I get to see where he's at with his invention. So tell me about yourself. Uh, well, I've been in, in the IT business about 15 years, but I truly, my passion is inventing. I would rather be sitting at my workbench tinkering than anything else. Or is he kind of the crazy dad in the backyard inventing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the crazy dad. This idea it actually started uh, from me and from Ali. <laughs> There's a little bit of serendipity. My wife and daughter and I were skating. I happened to have a pen light in my pocket. You know, I shined it down on the ice and it, the blue light just magically went through the crystals. I went to the store the next day and I bought five more of those pens and I duct taped them across my boot. And the kids around me just freaked out. Like, Whoa, dude, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that skate? From that moment on, it was like, glow blades are not about blinking lights on skates. Glow blades are about skating on beautiful pools of colored light. And that's where we've gotten to. When we're out there, you really see people light up and they love glow blades. The potential is just so good. So I've been at this for five, six years and I have skating groups and shows reaching out to me now, asking for glow blades and I don't have them to provide. Glowblades isn't a game changer. Life will go on as we know it, whether Glowblades makes it to market or not. But working with an inventor that has so much excitement and enthusiasm is always a plus when you're looking to make a deal. Welcome to my workshop. So over here, this is the current Glowblades prototype. So I try to design this as universal as possible. Glowblades uses a strip of ultra bright LEDs that attach to the bottom of your skate. And those LEDs reflect off of the ice, creating this beautiful pooling effect. And then the skater can also use built-in wireless technology to change the patterns or colors as they skate. Inside is a rechargeable battery. The cable from the light tubes plugs in the back. If I touch it one time, it's going to come on. And then it's going to start cycling through colors every three seconds. It's just a very simple entry-level product to get people skating on light. It's the first big wow. Okay. The second big wow is my glove. Now this glove is not working currently. It was, but it's pretty beat up. When it's working properly, what will happen is I'll have red, blue, green, and off. Our patent is on the glove. It's very difficult to patent lighted skates. Like many part-timers, Ralph hasn't quite perfected his invention. 
and that wireless glove, it looks like something you'd wear in a garden. So if he tr truly wants the wow factor, then there's definitely some adjustments we need to make for the new prototype. All let's right. go to the rink. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right. Wow, that's beautiful. There's something special about Glow Blades on the ice. The ice is magical. Yeah. Ralph has a cool product, and he definitely has passion for it. But how well he's thought out his business plan, I'm not so sure. What would be the cost for Glow Blades? If I were to go into this store and buy it? Probably in the ballpark of $69.95. Okay. And that's a pretty good price. Uh, I've spoken to several people in the skating industry and they think that's a fair price. Okay. This is our current business plan. Like many financial projections, they just show this. I need to be able to prove and support that. Or it might be like this. No, no. This is a great product. That there's demand that's going to skyrocket. I think that we just need to take a step back and make sure that we get the priorities right and just start building good products. <laughs> But balancing that with the reality of having um, debts that need to be paid. What debts do you have right I'm now? in debt. $75,000. Wow. I've certainly jeopardized our own personal finance, financial situation in the process. I get discouraged occasionally because everything costs money, you know, and we don't have enough money to survive, and so I do feel like we're running out of time. With a $75,000 investment, you could have easily had a very polished, done prototype, like, ready to go to manufacture. Yeah, and, and, and I made mistakes along the way, and I'm the first to admit that. I haven't tried to get a product to market before. There's a lot of work involved. This stuff doesn't just come out of the air. You have to find the right components. You have to put them together. Um, patenting, you know, the patent process has been an enormous expense. So I just think it's good just to consolidate and figure out what's that first product, what's that first market. So we need an exceptional prototype. I'm on it. That's something I can do. Thank you. Okay. Ralph's got ambition, but I'm not sure if his plan's been thought through. He's got a fun invention, but no clue about business. So we've got a lot of work to do before we sit in front of investors. in Little Elm, Texas, checking out an invention called the 3D Cake Decorator. It's like a 3D printer, except instead of plastic, it uses frosting to decorate cakes. When it comes to special occasions, more and more people want to give their cake that personal touch. So, specialty cakes have become very important to bakeries over the past few years. But, decorating those cakes requires talent and time. Travis Zinger, a mechanical engineer by trade, has a patent pending on a 3D cake decorating machine. And I think his inventions will help bakeries sell cakes with more ambitious and intricate designs. Come on in. Oh, great, thanks. In theory, the bakeries make more money and Travis gets rich. The keywords there, though, are in theory. Uh, guys, we have a guest. This is my son, Ethan, and my daughter, Emily, and my other daughter, Sylvia. Hey, Hi. Sylvia. And, of course, my beautiful wife, Amy. Hey, Amy. Hi, nice to meet Great you. Great to meet you. To have George knock on my door, it's like winning four or five lotteries at the same time. The 3D cake decorator means everything to me. I want this to help change my life, get us through college with my kids. It's monumental. Tell me about the invention. We were at the Dallas Makerspace one day. It's a creative space for me and my kids, and uh, there was a 3D printer going. On the shelf next to it was a little plastic cupcake sample that had been printed out. Oh, okay. And he was kind of like, wouldn't it be cool if you could 3D print food? And then, uh, you know, basically thought of the 3D cake decorator at that time. The 3D cake decorator is basically like a 3D printer, but for cakes. You put a cake on a platform, and a mechanical arm moves back and forth and up and down, extruding frosting out of a nozzle and creating the design of your choice. I'm not a Susie Homemaker type, which is odd because I came up with this, but I like to eat cake, don't get me wrong. <laughs> So it looks a little bit like this. Does this thing come preloaded with designs? How does that work? It will come preloaded with, you know, a dozen or so types of cake designs, or you could actually add your own design if you want. There's a digital file that converts the design into the actual machine code. Okay. So you put the cake in there, you get a cake out that looks like you want it to. So you've already coded it? I have some early um, algorithms that I've done, yeah. Really? So you're a mechanical engineer and you code on the side? 
I find myself trying to learn how to code, how to do electronics, how to do design. So all this interests me, so I just dig in and I try to do it all. So how long have you been um, working on this thing? A year outside of my day job, so a yeah. thousand hours or so. Something a like thousand that. hours? Yeah, but I don't really have any working prototypes yet. How come no prototype yet? You have to have the money, you have to have the time, and you have to have a place. Mm -hmm. And I never seem to have all three at once. Um, you know, with sports and some family activities, it, it's, it has taken a bit of a backseat. It's a lot of work, right? It is a lot of work. And, you know, what would be super awesome is if somebody would just knock on my door and be like, hey, I can totally help you. That would be just perfect. <laughs> I'll, uh, I know a guy. I know, you do? I know oh, a awesome. guy. That's going to be great. I'll call a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I put the invention on the back burner, and I need to kind of breathe life back into this thing. I need to be an example for my kids and inspire them as well. And the best way to do that is through example. And then having George come in and just fire me up again, you know, it was perfect. Walk me through your thought process on who your target market is. Target. It's something that's intended to be a consumer level. Moms, 25 to 45, mm -hmm. medium income type people. The target price for the consumer is uh, $900. $900 for a countertop appliance? It does seem steep um, when you see it at first, um, but kitchen appliances and things that go in the kitchen are expensive. How many cakes do you think people are going to make a year? Maybe two or three. So 300 bucks a cake? Mm -hmm. I mean, am I, am I just like, that's insane. It, it does seem like a lot, you know, but I mean, we paid, you know, four or five hundred bucks for knives, you know. Like knives you use every day, right? Is this, this is something that you see people using every day? Uh, no, this is more of a special treat kind of type thing. You would just kind of splurge and get the thing. I mean, a toaster is like 50 bucks. The best stand mixer is like 400 bucks. And Travis Zinger wants to sell you a device that you're going to use three times a year for $900 are you kidding me? Do you have a very clear picture in your mind of what the consumer process looks like? Mm -hmm. Walk me through the commercial side. As a baker, um, you have a lot of, of stuff to do. Time is very important. So if you could set a cake in motion and walk away from, away from it and then go handle something else and then it come back and the cake is completed, um, I believe there's a value there. And the consumer could just stand there and watch it make their cake being made. Right, right. And, and I think that's something else. But there's an experience there. If you could sit there and watch it, um, you know, that brings, that drives the memory home a little bit more. Sounds like you're kind of undecided, Travis. Well, you know, honestly, I, uh, I was leaning real heavy towards the consumer side, but I'm open. What if you present this to an investor and they say, love the idea, but you're starting with a commercial market? That's the only way I'm funding you. Well, um, then I would do my research and due diligence and make sure that I was able to support um, the numbers that I came up with. I want you to do that research before you walk into the room. If the commercial is the way to start, um, I'm willing to do the legwork to go the route as well. So... So I think the next step is for you to really develop the numbers for the most promising commercial market and honestly do those numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, math doesn't lie, so it's hard to believe math. Coming up. A lot of inventors start putting cotton in their ears and they can't hear market research. And this is something we do all day, every day. Nobody knows more about this than I do. Because that could be a problem. Later. So what happened there? When I saw the icing come out and it up the H, I was like, oh, we're screwed. Um, it's, uh... You guys have a sweet tooth, right? Because oh, you yeah. need it for this. I brought the 3D cake decorator over to my engineering team at Bluefish, and these guys are some of the best in the business for this sort of thing. But a 3D printer for cakes from scratch? That's going to be tough for anyone. These are the plans. There needs to be a few different pre-selected, you know, happy birthday, happy anniversary, maybe some sports ones. Part of the experience is watching this machine do its thing. Like okay. that's half the fun to me, yep. is watching this thing work. Yeah, this will be a fun one. I think it's so kinda, too. This is different. We have never done anything like this. Nope. So this will be a cool one. Yeah. Great. Right. Right. Awesome. Hey, thanks, thanks guys. buddy. Yep. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, week and a half. It's all, it's all in a day's work for you. Yeah, guys. this one's easy. <laughs> all right, thanks. All right. Hey. Hey. I've got a got? good one. It's yeah. a good one. Do this one first. Is that a figure skate? So glow blades. So oh. It's oh. really simple. LEDs on skates, right? Oh. They go around the front, and then what's cool is on ice, is it really glows. It creates like this pool light. That's kind of cool. Right. I'm going to go talk to you guys. All right, take care.
Hi. Hi. The biggest problem with Travis's 3D cake decorator is that he wants to market it as a home kitchen appliance, and he'd never be able to build a working machine for the price a consumer would pay for it. Now, I don't think he realizes the huge potential of the commercial market, so I sent him out to do a little field research. What I have is a, an invention called the 3D cake decorator. You put an undecorated cake on this machine, mm -hmm. and it will apply frosting. You know, you have really intricate designs that you could do, right. like this. Oh my gosh, that is really complicated for us. There are certain cakes that take us like five hours, six hours. You put this on a, on a machine like this, you can walk away, bake ten more cakes. That's, that's like a dream, you know. I, I would love to see it working. It will save us a lot of time. You know, in a baker business, uh, dealing with time means, means a lot. It's money, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that we can be more creative. So, yeah, I, I'm very, very interested. You have to call me. <laughs> George was talking about going into the commercial end of the business. Thank you so um, much. After talking with Irene today, I'm all in. I brought Ralph to Bluefish to see the new Globeblades prototype. I've asked the engineers to take a look at the design and make it less bulky, more streamlined. You know, take a look at the glove to see if they can completely rework it, miniaturize the electronics, and make it more user friendly. Come on, come on! <laughs> the moment of truth. This is Whoa. the new Globeblade. Whoa! So, what you're looking at here is a completely self contained unit. Wow. Everything's inside. The batteries, the electronics, the LED lights on both sides. You put it on the front just like yours, but we put, instead of a metal chain, we created a rubber piece. The strap is adjustable to different lengths, and then you have the lights on the bottom. How do you control them? Well, I'm glad you asked. We have <laughs> taken your glove, and we have created a new one. There they go. It lights up. Then you change it, and now it's slowly changing and then martin's favorite disco <laughs> that is my favorite absolutely somebody's going to want disco and then the pinky shuts it off all of the circuitry that you had here is we moved inside this cuff oh interesting there you go put it on very nice but the electronics are in the cuff that's a great idea this is not a prototype this this looks like a product i mean compare that with that I mean, what is that? It looks like something that crawled out from under the rock, you know. You even got the Globeblades logo on there. That's fantastic. <laughs> this is the real deal. And six years in the making to get to the point where I have something so cool looking. This is a big step. So I just want to thank everyone. I want to talk about predictions of cost to manufacture. It all depends on how crazy you want to go. Including wireless control? You could easily retail those for 60 to 70 bucks. That's a good number, and this is way more presentable to an investor than that. Well, the next step is to test it. We actually need to get it in the hands of skaters, and we need to get it in the hands of, of kids, and we need to see what they think, and you better hope they like it, because if they don't, you're not going in in front of an investor. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go have some fun. Great, okay. Do you have about 40 of these? I'm really worried that when you go into a pitch, that if you speak like that, they're going to think you're a bunch of fluff. The engineers at Bluefish have been working on the 3D cake decorator for a couple weeks. Travis has been working on it for over a year, but only on paper. Today, he gets to see his invention come to life. It's a big day. Wow. Check it out. That's awesome. What do you think? It's beautiful. It's huge. It's beautiful, though. It's for big cakes. It's for big cakes. <laughs> it was larger than life. It was right there. It's not in my head anymore. It's actually right there. So this side here would be the consumer side. Yeah, it allows for a consumer on this side to select the cakes they want on this screen, yeah. pick the ones they want, and then they can watch it through the window. Very cool. And we played a lot around with uh, different ways of extruding frosting, which has proven to not be the easiest thing in the world. Yes, it's tricky. We were printing at 4 a.m. and everything looked great. We went and had breakfast, came back at 11, and we changed nothing, and it was just a big blob running, just running out. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of dialing it in. Yeah, gotcha. 
This is nowhere near a final product yet. I mean, Bluefish only had two weeks to work on it. The real question is, can I put this in front of investors? I think it's cool. I'd like to see it run, though. The, I was going to say, the $100 million question, can we, can we see it work? Yeah, we absolutely can. So you'll figure it out pretty quick, but this is obviously a happy birthday design. He's writing. <laughs> it's a lot of ups and downs, downs and around. As beautiful as it was, it was even more beautiful to watch it work, to physically see it move back and forth and up and down and extrude the frosting out. It was really cool. So, so Michael, how much will this cost to make? This will run you about $1,200. The 3D cake decorator is going to cost a lot more to make than Travis originally thought. But that's when he was targeting the consumer market. At this point, we'd have to sell it for about 5000 bucks, which seems pretty viable for a high-volume supermarket. Guys, thank you very much. The next thing is I want to put it in a retail bakery and see what people think, see how people react. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I feel this, this like kind of like a wave of momentum, you know, to where I'm going to be completely unstoppable. It's going to be awesome. Take care. Thanks, guys. We're here at a Hagen grocery store to give the 3D cake decorator its very first test drive. Now, this is a very early prototype. If we take this thing to market, it's going to have thousands of options for all sorts of occasions, and you'll even be able to upload your own designs. But for today, we're just testing how shoppers react to the concept. If the machine can build excitement, we'll be in great shape for the pitch. That looks good sitting up there. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Great nice to see you. you. This is Travis. Hi, Hi Travis. how are you? Good to meet you. So, Janet, how many staff do you have on premises? In this bakery, we have about six people. Most of our employees do everything. They can bake, they can decorate, so it just depends on their schedule. And we can have between 30 and 40 cakes in one day. Oh, my God. Wow. So, do you see this replacing employees or being complimentary to employees? It'd be, it'd be complimentary. This would be a great addition so they can concentrate on wedding cakes. And this would be where somebody else could say, sure, a last minute order. Sure, we'll just do this for you right now. Or even something maybe after hours. Oh, absolutely. Well, we like the idea of it being creating excitement in the store. Well, let's let's get it going. Let's uh, yeah. let's have it decorate a cake. Hello. Hi. What is this? What does it look like to you? Wow. I have no idea. <laughs> it is a 3D cake decorator. It will automatically decorate whatever kind of cake you want. You want to give it a whirl? You can put any design you want. Any design you want. Let's just try the happy birthday. This is the football one. Do you want to do the football one? Yeah. Okay. Again. Okay. There it goes. Oh, hey. Like a French turn. Oh, wow. Wow. I've never seen a machine decorate a cake. The machine was bringing people over to the bakery. They would kind of just want to see what it was going to do. And I think it generated the buzz and it got that wow factor. It made me start thinking that this thing is actually going to build bigger than my vision. Decorate your own cake. Okay. Yeah. That's a great idea. Is it like part human, part machine? Yes. The 3D cake decorator field test is going well. People are coming over from all parts of the store, watching the machine do its thing. I think even with the early prototype mechanics, the entertainment value is clear. I think we've got a potential hit on our hands. This is the first time that you've seen people right. see this. Right. How'd you feel? I, I watched one of the, the kids, his eyes just light up. And when his eyes lit up, it really made me excited about what it can do and what's possible. But this isn't a polished, shiny machine at this stage. I need to do a lot of work to find the right investor for you. Absolutely. All right, I'll get on it. Thanks, George. Thank God. Steven, did I show you my shower arranger? It's pretty wild. Have you tried it out yet? Yes, I have. I cleaned our shower in 15 minutes. I never got my hands wet. Really? Wow. Heavy duty, just like Grandpa. Inventing is my passion. I inherited a lot of this from my father. It actually works. It's just oh, heavy. heavy huh? It's heavy because oh. it's crude, but try it. It's in our DNA. It's got to be, because Stephen definitely has it in his blood. And Allie does too, my daughter. It's heavy. It is heavy. I'd like to pass on the legacy of being able to create to my children. I had this idea about a remote control hummingbird. That would be cool. 
I would, I would play with that. Life is short, and you need to take that spark and blow on it, make it grow, and have a flame of success, a feeling of uh, gratification, knowing that you've actually built something that, that's, that's real, that's helpful, and maybe, maybe change the world. And I'm hoping Globates can do that for me. Bring the helicopter ball inside, okay? And we'll look at we'll it talk more. about it some more, sure. Today is field test day for Globeblades. Ralph thinks he has two main markets for his invention, professional skaters and kids, so I've invited them both. Ralph is a bit of a hype man when it comes to Globeblades, but I want to get the most honest feedback possible. So with that in mind, I'm going to keep Ralph at a comfortable distance. I want you to watch, I want you to listen, I want you to take notes, zip it, okay? So this is the penalty box. Yes, zip it, penalty box. All right. All right. I know that glow blades are exciting to kids, so it's really hard for me to turn off the sales pitch and sit back in the, what I call the penalty box. These are some demo glow blades, so I'm just going to let you guys watch and just soak it in, and we'll talk later, okay? Whoa. That looks cool when they flip. The Globeblades look awesome on the ice, the kids are impressed, but I want to know what the professionals think. What about usage? Where do you see these being used? Everywhere. I, w I see it on like public rinks for like a Saturday night kind of public session or a birthday party. Definitely marketable. Right now there's a glove with it. So this is the, the current glove. So to turn it on, you do this. Each oh! oh cool. Cool. Wait, let's do it again. <laughs> and the idea is that each finger has a different functionality. Personally, I would want to focus on my skating. For beginner skaters to have to worry about, you know, different uh, things like that. It could be a distraction distract. to their, yeah. their safety. Yeah. Do you guys want to try it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Time to put them on. Yeah. Beautiful. Looks good, Serena. I like it a lot. Yeah? Yes. Your lights match your sweater. Yeah. Should you plan that? Yeah. <laughs> you did? So we have this glove. Let's talk about just a general rental. I would feel kind of uncomfortable if, like, the gloves were already used. <laughs> okay. And it gets really cold in our strings, and people just, without even knowing, would wipe their nose on a glove. That's good feedback. Both the pros and kids loved the glow blades, but both had issues with the glove. It's impractical for ice shows, and there's an icky factor for the rental market. That said, it was a really positive test overall. What did you kind of take away from it? What were the, the biggest points that you, you liked? Just I took a lot of bigger notes. LEDs. You did. There were no big negative comments today. So it wasn't so obvious to me that the kids loved the glove. The glove is a big second wow, though. Being able to control the lights wirelessly is a big thing. And you saw today, proof in the pudding, the kids love glow blades. They love skating on light. Ralph's belief in these gloves is blinding him from the truth. The kids didn't like the gloves. The pros didn't like the gloves. No one likes the gloves. I admire his passion, but he might be making a big mistake. I think that you have a good idea, and it could change your life. But sometimes the way you speak about your product is so evangelical. Did you so see glow blades on the ice today? I did. Did you believe in what you saw? And I'm really worried that when you go into a pitch, that if you speak like that, they're going to think you're a bunch of fluff. But the truth is, you're not. Your idea is good. Your prototype is good. I just think we need to not talk about it in that way. Well, okay? you're not a skater. Skating is the fourth most popular sport in the United States. Nobody's seen skating on light before. It's Ralph's Glowblades could be a strong product, but his inability to take criticism could really hurt him in front of investors. So, Travis, are you ready? I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. So, two people in the room, one is an investor and one is sort of an industry expert. Okay. The investor is David Borlo. He's a managing partner at Crestlight. They basically help inventors like you take prototypes to market. That's perfect. The industry expert is Shannon Illingworth. He's the founder and chairman of AVT. Okay. Now, AVT basically started off making traditional vending machines. Now, basically, if it's automatic and it sells to consumers, they make it. 
Right. Okay. So I think I've got the dream team. That's here. right on the money here. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there they are. Hang on. All right. Second. Great. I am ready to do whatever I have to do to get a deal. It's an example that I'm trying to set for my kids. Building something, going after a dream, putting in the hard work, and this invention embodies that. Hello, hello. Hello. Come on in. I am super nervous. It's a lot like going into a high-rise building, 100 floors up, go outside to the railing, lean over and look over. David Borlo. David, pleasure to meet you. That's nice to meet Shannon you. Shannon Nice Shannon? to meet you, David. Oh, great to meet you, too. You have fear and excitement just kind of like hitting you at the same time. That's what it feels like. Guys, this is a 3D cake decorator. You put a uh, undecorated cake inside. You have a touchscreen user interface here that you can select through different types of designs. You can pick a happy birthday cake, set the machine in motion, and then you'll see the machine start doing what it does, decorating cakes. And one thing we noticed was it's fun to watch. You know, you just find yourself kind of looking at it, watching what it does. And uh, that's great, I think, to help convert sales as well. Um, these designs are preloaded into the machine. We just picked a couple simple designs for today. And, um, you know, you can have whatever you want in there. The idea is for somebody to come into the bakery, interface with the machine, uh, pick their designs, um, within a couple minutes, walk away with their cake. Also, in the future, you can upload graphics and things like that and put your own custom designs on here. Is this an operational efficiency? Am I doing something faster than I'm doing it before? Where do you think the value proposition is going to be? Like in an independent bakery, you could set this thing in motion, walk away, go do some other aspect of your business. All the while, it's doing its job in the background. Yeah. So it is saving you some time. This yeah. thing can work 24-7. It doesn't have to only work business hours. Its accuracy means you could do just about any design. You could put a graph on there. You could put perfect circles. I mean, these are things that are difficult to do with a hand. That's what I love about this machine. So we missed the, uh, the H. So what happened there? When I saw icing come out and it screwed up the H, I was like, we are officially Um, it's, uh... To find out more... So we missed the H. So what happened there? Um, it's, uh... Okay, so this is a prototype. Um, this is the first prototype. Okay. It gets a little temperamental with the temperature changes, and it's really designed to demonstrate the technology of extruding the frosting onto the cake. It messed up the first letter of the cake. Not ideal, but not the end of the world either. This is a first prototype. Things go wrong. This is why Travis needs funding. Now, thankfully, he handled it well, and the machine nailed the rest of the cake. I think we're good. Because it's a prototype, there is a little bit more to do. We have to refine the prototype. Um, you know, it could be a, a year, uh, maybe a year and a half before we're ready to deliver. Our goal um, is to sell these machines to grocery store bakeries. There are approximately 30,000 grocery stores in the United States. Our path to market is going to be through trade shows initially. We'll be able to approach members of grocery stores, multiple people who are in, in the same industry. And there's a ton of trade shows that this thing can get great exposure. I think it shows well, um, and uh, the right people will be there, and we'll be standing there with a pack of empty purchase orders ready to take the order. So to go to the next level, we'd be seeking an investment of $578,000. That'll help us get started with the company, get the prototype to the next level, get the machine streamlined, getting the supply chain and getting these out there and get to the next level. Okay. Well, first of all, what, what are you aiming for? So just some generals around the business model, the pricing model, okay. and the target costs. We'll start with the target cost, and that's $5,000 uh, for the machine. To manufacture it, our estimated cost is 1200 and so sell is 5000 Um, The cartridges, when you're using to make the product, is that something that's proprietary for you? Yeah, no, it's definitely proprietary to us. So that's another all revenue stream that can be generated through this machine is selling those cartridges. You're exactly right, and, and that's, that's what we'd like to do. That one cartridge, how long does that last? How many cakes does that do? Currently, um, that one cartridge that you saw, it was red and it laid down the red border. That was an entire cartridge. Wow. That's, that's an obstacle you got to work through. Yeah, yeah I, I agree, sir. I think, I think that the cartridge is... Um, right now, currently, it's a small limitation that I think we can over, uh, overcome. 
So I wanted to refine the prototype. There's an idea of doing some accessories for the machine. It would change the, the empty cartridge out. It would refill itself, and then it would be ready for the next one. Mm -hmm. How many cakes does a grocery store do in a day or a week? The numbers that we received from our market research were that they sell, you know, in the 300 range. And of the 300 cakes, all of those are frosted and decorated in that facility? Yes, they decorate them there in the store. How much is selling each cake? So each cake was going anywhere between like, you know, 15 to $30. And what would you sell that cake for after it was already 3D? We could definitely hit that same price point, if not a few dollars more. For the grocery store chains, the question will have to be, can I sell more? Is the 300 limited by the market or limited by the ability to not make more? How many more cakes will they need to do to buy a machine like this? Because it might be that by putting this in, we can actually make six or 700. We have to challenge right. the, the tolerance of the current model to understand why, why are the numbers that exist now the way they are? You know, if someone comes in at 9 p.m. and wants a custom cake, that they can't. They're limited to the options that they have there. Because the cake decorators leave at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., whatever it is. So my assumption would be that, yes, you can sell more cakes. But you're right, we've got to test that kind of stuff. Startups and in startup investing is really taking an experiment to a business model. Okay. And right now we have an experiment. How can we take an experiment, run the right types of tests, and figure out whether or not there is a market? One, one thing's for absolute certain, all of the ideas we've got right now are wrong. Price point, the cost, the ROI, all that has to be known like right away before you Absolutely. get to market. And you can't even go to a trade show yet not knowing that. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about uh, the machine itself and the business model. The, the, the pricing structure that we have I think is very foggy. That aside, I think that the potential value proposition is very strong. There's an entertainment component. The ability for my son to go on and take the video game character that he just created and print that. Right. That's interesting to me. Yeah. As a, as a store, I like the fact that I'm going to bring people in through my front door. That's very important to me. Being from the automated retail space and designing automated retail solutions, I love it. Right? I love it. There's a big niche. You know, actually kids just get mesmerized, <laughs> staring at that thing, yeah. watch them make a cake, you know? So, you know, last minute people forget their anniversaries, forget birthdays. I don't want to say it's me, <laughs> but, you know, everybody's made that kind of mistake, right? So, like... This, there's a niche for it. So, so we'd like to make an offer $300,000 in value for 25% of the company. Now this comes in two different phases. Feasibility phase is gonna be mostly services. It's gonna be mostly you and Shannon and I and our teams going into the market with a very clear value proposition that we believe is true. Once we have that feedback, then we will go to the next stage, which is discovery, where we will put capital to put into the machines, we'll have engineering on staff, and actually start to work on the business model. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's wonderful. I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, you have a deal. Thank you. They love the idea, you know. <laughs> I can't even explain how awesome that is to, to have somebody move into your space, love it, and want to help out some more. That, that's, that's a dream come true. So I heard him say $300,000 for 25% of the company, and then I heard Travis go, well, would you? And I was like, Travis, take the deal. And then he did, and he picked me up like the tiny person that I am. That's, like, great. <laughs> How are you feeling? Excited? A little nervous? It's taken Ralph six years to get to this point, to this meeting, uh, to this shot at getting Glowblades to market. Today Ralph is pitching to Terry Moore, a West Coast VC that has over 20 years experience investing in startups. Advising him is Pat Pattison. He's a former Disney executive and a merchandising expert who's launched products for both the Star Wars and Lord of the Rings franchises. So you really want to wow both of them? I can wow just about anybody. <laughs> I've seen you wow before. Wow, wow. My biggest worry about Ralph is that he's going to talk too much. Actually, no. He's going to talk too much. 
but I'm hoping that Globeblades is a good enough idea that the investors will overlook that. Pleasure to meet you. Ralph, hey, Ralph. Yes, Ralph, Ralph. pleasure to meet you. Terry Moore. Terry, pleasure to meet you. Let's you can see. have a seat. Yeah, why don't yeah. you tell us, uh, Get tell us about, uh, about what you're up to? So I am Ralph Haney. I'm the inventor and founder of Globeblades. Now for something you've never seen before. Let's go skating on light. I'm really nervous. I'm hoping to score a funding partner tonight because our company needs to raise funds to keep things moving. If, if I get a no tonight, I might just break down and cry. There's only a sampling of what Globeblades can do. What you don't see in there is the wireless features. We have a wireless glove that controls them. This is the new wireless prototype that we have. As you see, I have a glove with contact fingers, and this wraps around your skate. So the first finger turns on the color blue, the middle finger has it fade to green, and the ring finger sets it into a flashing mode. So it's about a $20 cost, and MSRP would be $69.95, but it, that could certainly go higher. What I'm seeking right now is $400,000. In return, we're offering a third of the company, and that's negotiable, of course. This is a huge market. Nobody's done this yet. Nobody's doing it. It's a win-win. I strongly believe we've positioned Global Aids to be very successful with a proper funding. Well, Ralph, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, you've got an incredible amount of passion. What kind of business do you want it to be? What's your vision for the business in three, four, or five years from now? I believe Globeblades and Skating on Light is going to become a household name, just like Rollerblades became a household name. I truly believe this. Globeblades are the one. My problem with this is the price point. You know, I honestly feel, and I've been at this long enough, I feel very confident that I could sell Globeblades to a blind man. I did a lot of light up product for the Electrical Light Parade at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. Light things like this, in my experience, were very much impulse buys. It was like, get it, have fun with it on the rink, throw it away kind of a thing. I would spend a hundred dollars on that right now to get my kid off the couch. What, what is that the impulse price point? You think like it's 20 bucks? 20 bucks, no, yeah. say 1999. That may be the knockoff version. You should be the oh, knockoff yeah. version. Oh, That may be the knockoff version. Oh. You should be the oh, knockoff version. Tell you what, guys, that would be so easy to do compared to what I've done so far. I really expect Globeblades to be the leader in the. It's going to be the skating on light benchmark. But 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 let's talk about this because the price point also includes the glove. Okay, that's a big difference. Because what's I, the price I, point without the glove? What what do you what can you sell just the the Globeblades for? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, I, I, you know, I'd be potentially half the price. So what is the product? Is it the glow blades or is it the glow blades and the gloves or is it the gloves or? Well, the, the, the wireless control is a, is a huge second wow. So I see that as the product. I don't see that for some reason. That part you'd have to convince me a little bit. Well, I'm just thinking there's a version that doesn't need to be wireless, doesn't need to have all that stuff. I like it. I think it's great. But it just feels like one of the big problems is going to be you. This is not unusual. I deal with a lot of inventors, and they get so wrapped up in it, they, they start putting cotton in their ears, and they can't hear market research. And this is something we do all day, every day. Uh, honestly, nobody knows more about this than I do because I've but been Sometimes that could years. be a problem. So, so I, think, I think where we're going is that... Uh, I'm interested enough to test the waters here, but I think what we need to do here is really finalize this robust design so we can get it out in the marketplace. I think if you were willing to step aside and if we could bring in the right CEO to grow the business that's done this before, I'd be willing to make an offer of uh, $50,000 for a controlling interest in the entire business, so 51%. How does that sound? Let me think about it for a minute, and I don't want to sound negative in any way. Um, I'm just thinking through the numbers. I'm still involved. I have to be because I know the skating on light business. You can call yourself any title you want to, to be involved, but a professional business manager to grow the business that's done this before uh, would really be compelling. Um, well, let me ask you a quick question. If you're making money, do you care about your role? No, because I have other inventions. 
I'm an inventor at heart. Okay. You're the, the, the uh, founder, the creator, the inventor of Glowblades. I think that's a good role. How does that sound? Yeah, well, hey, if you're putting 50000 on the table, I'd be a fool to refuse it. Yeah, hey. Awesome. Thank you. That sounds great. It's not as much as I asked for. I was hoping to get a large chunk of money so we could actually have full-time employees and such. But I'm excited to have $50,000 to keep moving. The company will stay alive. The company will keep moving. Now we can focus on getting them out there in the marketplace. It's another step. Yep, it's a big step. You, not only did you get 50 grand, you have people on your team that have connections that can share their Rolodex and that can get you pointed in the right direction. Big partners. This is a victory. Right. Absolutely. Um, it would have been a real bummer to walk out of here with nothing after all this. Awesome. Thanks, Deanne. Yay. Success. Yep. I'm, here all we go. Right. It's a good day. It is. Yeah, I want to sleep well tonight. <laughs>